Escalating tensions between India and Canada, global reactions are continuing to pour in. My colleague Shivani Gupta spoke with former Pentagon official Michael Rubin on the Western hypocrisy on terrorism and taking out targets on foreign soil. Let's take a look. Um, Michael, you've written about how Khalistani sympathizers and uh, secessionists have found shelter in Canada and how Canada is the weak link as far as terror financing and terror funding, clamping down on terror funding in the world is concerned. Could you tell us more of what you found and why do you think, particularly in Canada, uh, the Sikh separatist movement is finding so much political support? Well, first of all, with regard to your previous question, this is where I would actually agree with you that perhaps the United States, not perhaps, the United States and Canada and many in the West do embrace double standards. For example, when it comes to uh, identification of terrorists, when it comes to terror finance, um, when we look at the Financial Action Task Force, which mm -hmm. an international body which monitors uh, terror finance, if we're going to use consistent standards, absolutely. Canada should be on the gray list, if not the black list, because of what it's been allowing to happen with regard to Khalistani extremism. Mm -hmm. um, you have, I mean, the Khalistani extremist movement, one thing which diplomats need to understand is not every separatist movement is legitimate. I, let me make an example. I'll put on my history nerd cap uh, mm -hmm. to the Katanga separatism in Congo. That was wholly financed by Belgian financiers who wanted a cut of the copper income. In this case, when we hear about the Khalistanis, it's important to recognize that the only people who are interested in Khalistani separatism are few activists overseas, mostly in Canada, perhaps a few in California, but not in India itself. And yes. we need to recognize just how illegitimate this movement is. Unfortunately, Canada has not been. Justin Trudeau, in this case, he's losing an election. There's um, Sikhs and Khalistani activists in very specific swing districts, he's basically throwing international relations and Canada's moral uh, moral standpoint under the bus for the sake of cheap politics. Mm -hmm. You spoke about double standards and hypocrisy. Now, another thing this episode is shining a light is on taking out enmical targets in foreign on foreign soil. Uh, a lot of people in India and around the world are talking about that even if India was behind the Niger killing, uh, someone who's prescribed a terrorist in India, what is so wrong about it when countries like US and others have also taken out targets on foreign soil? Well, I'm not a diplomat, so let me call it as I see it. I think in this case, the Indians are absolutely right. I haven't seen evidence to suggest that the Indians took out Najar, but I'll be the first one to say in the United States that if they did, more power to them. Najar was a terrorist. He had blood on his hands. Now, I don't want to be morally equivalent and say that every country can take out um, its adversaries in every other mm -hmm. country, but I'll make an exception for democracies. Uh, the United States is a democracy, and we did it. Uh, India is a democracy. And the key thing with both the United States and India is this isn't the tool of first resort. India tried extradition. India tried diplomatic mediation. And Justin Trudeau was was irresponsible. It's the I don't care who the prime minister of India is. It's the job of a democratically elected prime minister to protect their people. And that's what Prime Minister Modi was doing in this case, if he were indeed involved. But again, I've seen no evidence to suggest that. That's what the United States has done when it took out Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi or Qasem Soleimani or Osama bin Laden. It's different than the Iranians coming or the Pakistanis coming and assassinating, um, for example, in Pakistan's case, allegedly Karima Baluch in, in Toronto. And again, Justin Trudeau has to explain why he's been so silent in that case.